one of the great things about Scrabble is how many different ways the game can unfold visually. You've got your staircase boards, you've got wide open shootouts with tons of bingos, you've got incredibly creative constructed boards like the Oxyfen Butazone, Thousand Point Play, and everything in between. But what if I told you that one of my favorite finished game boards between two of the most creative players in Scrabble was this? There's no words there. No, this isn't an editing mistake. This is the final board. And it's a story well worth an episode of Scrabble history. It's July 2010, and one of North America's premier regional events, the Albany 4th of July tournament, has just gotten underway. For decades, this tournament has drawn most of the top players in the Northeast United States, including Marlon Hill and Ben Schoenbrunn. Marlon's electric personality and top-notch Scrabble skills have made him one of the most widely recognized players in Scrabble. His charisma jumps off the page in the book Word Freak and off the silver screen in the documentary Word Wars. His creativity and incredible word knowledge have led to several legendary plays, including extending O to Gaspero and Quinn to Lambrican. Meanwhile, Ben has established himself as one of the top players in North America, with four top 10 finishes at the North American Championship in recent years and a slew of impressive regional wins. He's also the pioneer of Scrabble streaming on Twitch. However, 13 years ago in 2010, Ben was just starting his career, whereas Marlon had been playing for decades, making him a big favorite to win this game. Marlon goes first and draws A-E-E-G-T-T-V. Surprisingly, there's no five-letter word containing a V here, and his choices are uninspiring. In fact, it's a great rack to go second with instead of first, because with an E or an N, two of the most common letters in Scrabble, this rack becomes a bingo with vegetate or vegetant. So Marlin cleverly plays the word gavette for 80 points. It's not a valid word, but it looks kind of like one, especially because gavotte and navette are both words. Given that Ben is an underdog in the game, he might trust Marlin's word knowledge over his own. But even if Ben challenges, it's not a guarantee he'll think of vegetate or vegetant, despite seeing Marlin's letters, and he might inadvertently give Marlin the E or N that he needs to bingo. Instead, Ben correctly challenges the phony off the board. But here's where things get interesting. Ben's tiles are D-E-I-I-K-O-R. He knows that Marlin is up to something with Gavette, but makes a critical mistake. He chooses to exchange K-O-I, and friendly guy that he is, says out loud to Marlin, you're not getting an I. Thinking that vegetate is spelled with an I. Simply playing koi instead of exchanging it here would have been perfectly safe. After hearing this comment from Ben, the upside of Marlin's gambit is even greater than it was before. While it's clear that Ben hasn't technically overlooked the possibility of vegetate, he's spelling it wrong. So not only is Ben likely to play an E, thinking he's safe, but he'll also challenge the correct spelling of vegetate afterwards, thinking that Marlin is once again bluffing him. Not only will Marlin potentially get his bingo, he'll get an extra turn to go along with it, an even better outcome than he originally planned. So he decides to double down and play Vetage, another invalid but plausible looking word, for 80 points once again. But Ben once again challenges off the phony. He draws DRT after his exchange, and a play like Dirt would be just fine here, giving Marlin neither of the letters he needs and forcing him to respond with something uninspiring. But again, Ben thinks that his eye would give Marlin a bingo, so he exchanges a second time throwing back 1D and 1R to unduplicate those tiles and keep a strong bingo leave. He draws a G and another R back. Now over to Marlin, who is, of course, holding exactly the same letters. At this point, Marlin and Ben have played four turns with no score. Perhaps you're asking, can they just go on forever back and forth like this? 
Fortunately not. In tournament Scrabble, six consecutive turns of zero points ends the game. And when a Scrabble game ends in this fashion, each player subtracts their combined rack value from their score. So, suspecting that Ben may not realize how close he is to that rule taking effect, Marlin now opts to exchange his two high point letters, the G and V, back into the bag, retaining all one point tiles. But as Ben himself says about this game, when he said exchange two, I knew exactly what he was trying to do and decided that I would have an easier time trying to beat him in a coin flip than I would a full game of Scrabble since he's a better player than me. Because Ben has just seen all seven of Marlin's tiles multiple times, he knows with certainty that Marlin exchanged VG, leaving five one-point tiles. And he'll be even odds to at least tie the game by exchanging his D and G, leaving five one-point tiles of his own. So Ben proceeds to exchange DG, ending the game. But who ends up winning? It's time for the climactic showdown. Marlin has drawn an O and amazingly one of the two blanks, which dramatically improves his winning chances by adding zero additional points to his rack. Ben can only tie now by drawing the other blank and another one point tile. But while he does draw a one point tile in the O, he draws the worst possible tile of the Q along with it. So Marlin subtracts six points from his score to finish with negative six points, but Ben moves even further into the negative with a score of negative 16. And that's your final score, negative six to negative 16. If you've ever finished a game of Scrabble with any number of points on the scoreboard, you can now say that you scored more points than these two Scrabble masters combined. I just love that a game like this is even possible in Scrabble, and the particular circumstances that led to it are incredibly rare. Marlin had to draw just the right rack to consider his clever gambit. Ben had to say exactly the wrong thing out loud to get Marlin to try the gambit a second time. And had Ben drawn a bingo or even a decent 30-point play on any of his exchanges, he would have played it and the game would have continued as nearly every single other Scrabble game does. It was a charmed tournament for Marlin, who ended up winning the whole thing with a 15-5 record. But looking over his round-by-round -round results, it's pretty clear which game stands out from the bunch. At the time, this game broke the record as the lowest ever combined game score in North American Scrabble, despite the fact that not a single word was on the board at the end of the game, it's still one of my favorite games in Scrabble history.